YouTube as a uh, culprit tonight. Now I'm ready. Be a nice way if we could ever figure out a way to delay everything so it all go at once. This is Geek News Central. My name is Todd Cochran, coming to you from FEMA Region 5 in the new media production studio designed by Automute.com in Coldwater, Michigan. Tonight's lead stories are Coalition for App Fairness has been formed. A pile of news from Amazon and Ring. I mean, a pile. So much so, those are the top two for the night. I want to welcome you to episode 1,477 of the Geek News Central podcast for Thursday, September 21st, 24th, excuse me. <laughs> this show is sponsored in part by GoDaddy.com and listeners just like you. Great deals from GoDaddy can be found at GeekNewsCentral.com forward slash GoDaddy, or you can support this show today at GeekNewsCentral.com forward slash Insider. Hey, if you're a brand new listener, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thanks for checking out the, the show. Make sure you get over to geeknewcentral.com. When you're over on the website, get subscribed to the podcast right there on the main page. You're going to find a way to do that. You can sign up for our newsletter as well. You can join our chat room as well at geeknews.chat or our Discord channel. That link is up in the show notes. We've got a Slack channel as well. That's where the cool kids hang out. If you want to be part of that, all you got to do is email me at geeknews at gmail.com. That's a great email address as well to send your comments in about the show. And if you send in a comment about the show, I'm getting so much email. Please, 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 please put for show or something in the title so I know that it's for the show so I don't miss your email. I was only 600 emails behind this morning going through my inbox my personal email so just let you know that but anyway send me an email geeknews at gmail.com of course it's real easy to follow me on twitter as well that twitter address is at geek news that's following right along all my partner shows are linked to geeknewscentral.com be new media show the pro gear site that'd be the new media show said that twice gnc weekend review the gadget professor with mr don bain so got a lot of great podcasts over link at geekcentral.com and of course you can follow me on facebook as well but more importantly this show is sponsored by the longest running continuous sponsor of a podcast that's our good friends at godaddy.com again you can go over geekcentral.com forward slash godaddy you can save a lot of money you can save a lot of money by using my promo code whether it be 30 percent off a new product purchase whether it be a 499.com for new or transfer domains for new trans for new customers or a dollar a month a dollar a month for the first year, a dollar a month economy hosting for the first year with a free domain, or a dollar a month, I say it again, a dollar a month manage WordPress hosting for the first year with a free domain. Can't beat that. That's a deal. That gets you going, that gets you started, that gets you online, that gets you a COVID proof website that you can start something, start a business, start a blog, start a podcast. Really, 12 bucks. Where else? Where? Let's, let's be frank. Where else can you start something so spectacular and so easy and so cheap? Get, a, get online, get a business going, get a blog going, do something special. Take that downtime, take the extra time you have and set up a website on GoDaddy and use my promo code. And if you don't want to do that, then you share these codes with your friends, family members, people that you know, because when you do that, it's just like writing a check. Just like writing a check to Geek New Central when they use that promo code when they buy your product or service. And here's the best part. Geek New Central listeners save an average, average of 87% on their purchases of GoDaddy hosting account. And currently about $350 on each GoDaddy domain name. So uh, again, all these codes are not expiring. They all work. Go to the website, geeknewcentral.com forward slash GoDaddy. Click on one to lock in the price or take the code with you and use it at checkout. Make sure you apply it. Make sure when you get to the checkout counter, this code that you use from my website is applied because it's awful easy to pick up a code from some other site, especially when you're window shopping and then we lose credit for it. So enter that promo code. If it is in your window, when you check out at GoDaddy, even if you don't get a discount on something you're buying there, then use one of my promo codes. That's fantastic. So make sure to take use of that 30% off code. 
So I want to thank GoDaddy for being a longtime sponsor here at Geekness Central Podcast. And I want to thank you for your ongoing support of the sponsor. It is greatly appreciated. We are approaching, my goodness, my, 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 my goodness, ending, approaching the end of September. And I'm just kind of like, oh, my goodness, you got to be kidding me. There is a. Uh, it's, 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 it's hard to believe where 2020 just flush it down the toilet. But here we are, right? So I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone's mentally okay, taking care of families and so forth. So what's going on here? Well, it's Groundhog Day. <laughs> Anybody else feel like it's Groundhog Day? Come on now. I know some of you do. But I, I've kind of figured out. I had a good weekend off last weekend. I got some good mental recovery time. And I got into the office Monday morning and went strong Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, about four o'clock this afternoon. I got done with a meeting and I kind of just like, I need a nap. <laughs> I need a nap. And I tried to take a 15-minute combat nap. That didn't work out well because my phone rang. My CIO called me, so him and I talked for 30 minutes. But uh, when you hit the wall, you know, when you hit the wall during the day, and I go hard all day, I hit the office, and it's, it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's Mach 5. <laughs> Afterburner the whole day. And same thing goes for my support team, too. And, you know, one of my... Uh, my sport team guy said, hey, I, I'm taking Friday and Monday off. I see. And he says, I need a mental health day. <laughs> so are you guys taking mental health days? Are you taking some time off? So uh, anyway, I found I hit the wall today about 4 o'clock. I'll be good for tomorrow. I have a half-day schedule tomorrow. <laughs> Let's turn into a full day because I'm preparing for the podcast award. So if I'm not busy on one thing, I'll be busy on another. And then I agreed to keynote an, an address in November, which I have to start working on. So I'm a, I'm a glutton for punishment. But our conspiracy theorist, Archiver, did not come through. There is no conspiracy theory for the show. So that's okay. We'll miss a segment. I'm, I'm shaming him just a little bit. He's listening now. He, he knows he forgot. But he's busy too. He has a... He has a he has a life and a wife, so uh, <laughs> so Michael uh, will we'll give you a pass. But hey, everyone, thanks for being here. Thanks for being part of the show. I do have um, Kirk man nailed it. I, I I opened up the show prep notes today, and I'm looking through this stack of stuff, and I'm like, ring, 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 ring. I'm at Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. I said, did they have an event today? <laughs> I guess they did. I haven't been paying attention, but the uh, we're not going to start off with them, but we're going to start off with a story that's over on The Verge talking about how Spotify, Epic, Tile, and Match, and more are rallying developers against Apple's App Store policies, and they're calling it the Coalition for App Fairness. And... Um, you know, here's, here's what I keep telling people. <laughs> you're on someone else's platform. You're under their rules. And the same thing goes in the podcasting space. I keep telling podcasters, you're hosting over at a competitor, then you're on their platform. You, you, you have to follow their rules and, and, and work on their platform and promote their .com. Whereas when, when podcasters work with us, they're... 90% of the time, they're on their own .com. They're using our plugin. They got the ability to build their brand and control their IP, set their own prices, set their own policies. They don't, they don't have to ask me for permission. We're just a service provider. Whereas app folks have gotten rich because some have gotten rich and built big businesses around someone else's platform. And they knew that going in they knew the rev share rules but they're kind of sick of it and i don't blame bl blame them for being sick of it 
While most of the founding members have individually fought or are fighting with Apple over its App Store policies, the Coalition for App Fairness marks more coordinated effort for developers to formally protest Apple's rule. The goal is also to provide a central organization for developers to join, especially those who may not have the clout or resources to take on Apple. The Coalition says it welcomes companies of any size in any industry who are committed to protecting consumer choices, fostering competition, and creating a level playing field for all app and game developers globally. The Coalition cites three main issues of contention. Apple's 30% cut of any payment sold through the store. The lack of any other competitive options for app distribution on iOS. And a claim that Apple uses its control over iOS to favor its own services. So they're using the anti-competitive slant, which is basically the angle that Spotify is going against Apple with an antitrust suit in the European Union. We know that Base Clamp has clashed with Apple earlier this year, claiming that Apple is refusing to approve future updates for its pay email app unless it sold subscriptions through Apple's store. Blix claimed that Apple stole its ideas for anonymous email sign-in and then booted it from the App Store. The company has previously tried to rally other developers to join its fight. We know that Tile testified in Congress that Apple used its platform to undercut its product usability on iOS. And the list goes on. And the Coalition for App Fairness is hoping to gain influence over Apple through a United Developer Front. Now, if, United, if, if developers get on there in mass, they can do that. But here's what Apple can do because it's a walled garden. They can tell you, pack sand, go away. We don't need you. There's millions of other apps that are here to replace you. You agreed to the rules in the beginning, so screw you. That's what Apple can say. Now, will they say that? They have. The question is, will it continue with this coalition for app fairness? I don't know. Now, my company has built some apps now, primarily a private podcasting app. And we don't sell any services through it. I don't have to give Apple a cut. People come to my website, they, they buy the services that they need, and then they can access the app through a login. Uh, I don't sell anything on the app. Probably never will. So for me, there's no really revenue issue there for Apple and giving them 30%. Now, if they say I had to sell my service through them, well, that might be a bigger problem because I don't know if I could even sell my service through them. Um, it just doesn't work that way with the type of customers I'm dealing with. So anyway, we'll see what happens here with this new coalition for app fairness. I feel, feel for these folks. I really do. But these are big boy companies now with big boy pants and big boy budget. And when you tell some CEO that you got to give 30%, off the top. Now, can you imagine running a, a store? And, well, of course, some of you live in some cities where they take this much, but can you imagine running a, a, a commercial storefront and the, uh, the person that, uh, the street that is paved in front of you by the county, they come and say, hey, because you people walk into this store off my street, I, I want 30% of your, of your revenue right off the top. Just, that's what I want. Otherwise, we're, we're going to block the entrance to your door and people won't be able to get in. So that's, I guess, maybe one of the analogies we can use. And companies don't, businesses largely today, in the real world with the real brick and mortar, 30% is a pipe dream when it comes to a profit margin on, on stuff. In the digital world, it's a little different. But I look at the cost, you know, I look at the cost that I incurred to build our private podcasting platform. 
And I probably got a half million wrapped up into that in building it. Now I have to sell services around that to make that money back. And I know my expected time to recoup my investment and the ongoing maintenance of that. But I thank God I don't have to give someone 30%. It wouldn't have made it possible for me to have built that as an optimal, an optimal product for us. If I knew I'd have to give 30% off the top. It's not cheap to build an app and to build an app well. It's not, it's not inexpensive. It's over six figures easily to just get, well, 50K an app to get a decent app developed and debugged. And it's, it's not inexpensive. And especially if you're tying into an API and all kinds of other stuff, yeah, it's, it's big money, big, 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 big money. Some of these folks have app developers on that they're paying salaries to. So, yeah, it's an interesting, it's an interesting time. All right, let's talk about Amazon and their product offering. The first one has me really bugged. <laughs> they have come out with a new Echo Show. I have an Echo Show. It's the most worthless piece of Amazon equipment that I have. And uh, every once in a while, it squawks at me. I look at it once in a while to see what time it is. But besides that, it is literally the most worthless piece of Amazon equipment that I've ever had. But yet, they've come out with a new one. But this one's a little bit weird. You set it on your, yeah, you sit on your kitchen table, let's say, or counter. And it's going to follow you around with its camera. It's going to swivel so that it's looking at you when you turn to look in its direction. Uh huh. What do you guys think about that one? Think about having the device following you around. Instead of being fixed in one position, the new Echo Show 10's display is perched on a motorized base that swivels around automatically. Well, it says whenever you interact with the device by using a blend of computer vision technology and echolocation, the Echo Show can determine where you are in a room and swivel itself around to face you so you can always get a good view of the screen. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I opt out because how often do I get these devices to react to me when I haven't said nothing to them all the time? The one that's the worst is the, uh, C H R O M E device. It's the worst. The Google, you know, the Google, I should have said H O M E. It's the worst of them all. In responding, it when it just it, it's listening and it triggers on anything. So the next thing that's been announced by Ring is a Ring a mailbox sensor. It lets you know if someone's been messing with your mail. So the thirty dollar mailbox sensor snuck in with Ring's other news today. Orders open on October eighth, and uh, so that's interesting. Uh, yeah, you know, mail theft is a big issue, right? Now. And uh, they've had a, a rash of it in Hawaii. It was especially around the time when those stimulus checks were coming in. I don't know if you've had an issue in your neighborhood or not, but they had a bunch of that going on in Hawaii. But apparently this detects when someone opens the lid. It tells you when the mailman drops stuff off or someone's messed with your, with your mailbox whatsoever. It'll send you a little note. Save you a trip to the mailbox when it's cold. You know, it's cold here. There's nothing, you know, you, you, you get to the front porch. It's, it's blowing. It's 20 below zero. You don't want to put a coat on. And you're sweats in a t-shirt. And you run to the mailbox. You check for the mail. It hasn't went yet. You run back to the house pissed. And the mailman rolls up 30 seconds late. This saves you a trip to the mailbox. 
So I guess that's good, right? So is that worth the, you know, one less, you know, we all need exercise in the winter. So maybe, uh, maybe this will not, you won't get as much exercise. Next thing is Ring announces a new line of security cameras for cars. And they're working with Tesla and others to integrate existing cameras into the Ring platform. So uh, my car has a, has a camera in it already. It's uh, one that I bought aftermarket. It's not connected to the car's MiFi, though. But this one here is designed to connect to, uh, you know, if you have uh, Wi-Fi in your car. And, uh, but it's called the Car Cam Car Alarm. And Car Connect System, it supports the company's home security alarm, video doorbells, and security cameras and provide owners with alerts for attempted break-ins. And again, these are going to be available next year starting at $59.99. And uh, this one actually plugs into your car's OBD-2 diagnostic port and sends alerts to your phone when it decks a break-in, someone trying to tow the vehicle or if, an if another vehicle hits your car. So I don't know how that really works. Oh, it says for connectivity, the car alarm utilizes parent company's Amazon's new sidewalk network uh, that we talked about on the last show. So, uh, of course, we may not have a sidewalk network. You know, where I live, the Wi-Fi barely gets out of the house. So I don't know about this. And you're going to have the ability to ping first responders and so forth. So. Anyway, I don't think it's going to be a perfect solution at all. Again, depends on your connectivity. The one that's kind of the coolest is a drone. Ring's latest security camera is a drone that flies around inside your house. So always home cam. And this is, I think, ambitious because this thing's going to take off out of its holder. It's going to fly around to a room. It's going to do some basically checking on things when you want it to. And again, it's an autonomous drone and give you a perspective any room you want when you're not at home. Once it's done flying, the always cam returns to a stock to charge its batteries. Expect it to be $249. Here's what's going to happen with this thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's just like my Roomba. It's going to get hung up somewhere. And you're going to have to go find the stupid thing and put it back in its holder. That's what happens to my Roomba all the time. I get home and it's like, where are you at now? It's tangled up over here or it's stuck here. Or it's stuck there. It drives me crazy. When it works, it works. But when it gets hung up, it's all done. It's dumb. I have to go find it. So uh, anyway, 249 for that. We'll see where that goes. Also, they're saying E-L-E-X-A will soon gain more natural sounding speech and recognize when multiple people are speaking. So it's going to detect different people in the home which is kind of weird. The pandemic has supposedly supercharged voice platform usage, which is already on the upswing. According to a study by NPR and Edison Research, the percentage of voice-enabled device owners who use commands at least once a day rose between the beginning of 2020 and start of April. Just over a third of smart speaker owners say they listen to more music, entertainment, and news from their devices than they did before. I don't, probably. So they're going to have an enhancement to a mode introduced in 2018. It's going to let multiple people join the conversation. And it's going to have um, some sound detection going on as well, which is going to be part of a premium offering. It's the sound of foot, uh, footfalls, doors closing, opening, and more 24-7 monitoring with an access to emergency hotline. So it's going to detect when someone has tried to rattle the door or open the door, you know? So uh, that's kind of interesting. My Nest devices always now report when they've detected movement. And of course, who, does, who is Nest owned by now? <laughs> so uh, some of that stuff is good, but some of it can become very, very annoying. Hey, Amazon's Luna Cloud Gaming Service arrives this next month. It features Twitch integration from day one. So uh, it goes live again early October. And uh, Luna will support Fire TV, PC, Mac, and iOS devices as its first at first in early access with Android support coming just weeks later. 
Alongside this software, Amazon built a low latency Alexa enabled Aluna controller and it'll be available for 50 bucks during early access instead of communicating with the screen like the traditional Bluetooth controller. The Luna gamepad connects directly to the cloud. Hmm. If you have internet connectivity, a move that Amazon says reduces latency by 20 to 30%. Okay, whatever. Um, you got to have, oh, well, you've got to have a, t a minimum of 10 megs of, of, of data. So that cuts out me, at least uh, when I'm at the house. So anyway, that's more on that. Amazon Fire TV Stick Lite offers HD streaming for $30. So uh, I always travel with uh, both a, um, a Fire TV Stick and also a Roku Stick. It's in my little bag, travels in my bag. That way it depends on where I end up. If the hotel TV sucks, which it usually does, I can plug it in, connect to the whole hotel Wi-Fi if I'm there for three or four days, and I get to enjoy my own content which is uh, pretty nice. Instead of signing in to the hotel's network and forgetting about that later on their smart TVs and so forth. But we've got two articles tonight on some of the services, so I'll, I'm not going to double the, the damage here when we're, we're talking about stuff, but you may find two links to similar topics within the, uh, uh, within the content. So Alexa can bark at intruders from your Echo for $49 per year. So this is this Guard Plus that we talked about a little bit earlier actually will play warning sound. Talk to people, do barking dog sounds. Your, your device can even listen for smoke and carbon monoxide alarms and let you know if they go off. So uh, all this is ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching on the monthly, monthly credit card bill. Hey, if you're watching today on live, make sure you say hello. We definitely appreciate it when you do. Thanks for checking in. So what's coming to HBO in October 2020? Well, I got a list of, of television programs for you. And uh, yeah, I haven't been watching much regular TV. Talked about it here recently as well. Been mostly on, on YouTube. So watching YouTube series that I like. Uh, I noticed that uh, Casey Neistat is back. He's doing videos again. Very short ones, a little five-minute pieces. But uh, something's up there. I don't know what's going on. He moved to L.A. I didn't know he moved to L.A. And his wife hates it out there. So I don't know if you watch his YouTube videos. I know Chris, my son, likes watching Casey. He does an excellent job on editing and has a certain feel to his content, uh, along with other stuff. And still watching Sailing Zatara. If you are uh, looking for something interesting to watch, uh, go back and watch about a year's worth of their their history. Sailing Zatara is another good YouTube channel I like right now. And uh, I'll start recommending a couple that I'm watching. If you've got a YouTube series that you're watching, hey, geeknews at gmail.com. Geeknews at gmail.com. And just send me, you know, the series you're watching and the YouTube person you like. And it doesn't have to be mega channels. These can be, you know, 10,000, 50,000 listeners or viewers. And as long as they got something interesting to talk about, uh, turn me on to it. Google, Facebook, and Twitter CEOs may face subpoenas from a Senate panel, and they're scheduled as, the hearing is scheduled for October 1st. This just popped. Don't know if they're going to attend, but they say they may submit subpoenas if they waffle on coming. Guess what they're going to talk about? Section 230. Yeah. This would be a good one. I might actually turn on C-SPAN for this. Section 230 is a pivotal law for content moderation practices online. In July, a subcommittee hosted a hearing concerning the PACT Act, an ostable compromise between bias hawks and more measured reformers, although the results of the discussion were inconclusive. The Senate committee has launched numerous investigations into alleged bias on Facebook and other platforms. And potential changes in Section 230 have become a lively issue for Congress as election pro, uh, approaches here. So, uh, yeah, we've talked a lot about Section 230 on this show. You just can't have it both ways, ladies and gentlemen. Now, when's the last time anyone went out and bought a hard drive? 
I, I'm knocking on wood. It's for me. I have not, have not had to buy any hard drive. My network tech storage devices. I'm probably am not knocking on wood. Let me knock on this over here. That's pressed wood. So I'm hoping it's good. But when's the last time you bought a hard drive? Check this out. Seems like yesterday when eight terabyte drives were really big. Did you know that Western Digital has released a new larger red, pro, and purple drive called, well, not called, 18 terabytes? Yes, 18 terabytes. 18 terabytes. How much does that cost? Seagate's 18 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro red drive is available for ordering at select retailers now. Woo! For $580 retail. But actual stock isn't expected until mid October. Western's 18 terabyte gold drives are available now for $593. Holy smokes! Now, if you're going to buy any of these drives for a network attack storage device, please, please, please pay attention. Green are considered consumer drives. Blue are considered generic consumer drives. Now, green are the lowest performance color in a Western Digital offering. Black is a performance, 7,200 RPM, plenty of cash. It's not recommended for NAS. Red, NAS, it's built for NAS, prioritizes reliability and vibration isolation, not, not necessarily speed demons. And they have red NAS and red uh, Pro with SMR models. Purple is for surveillance. Do not, do not use a purple drive in a network attached. I had someone do that once. They last about six months. Gold, ooh, ooh, ooh. Gold is for enterprise. The gold label in guarantees SATA access. And they've got their helium-filled enclosures. They, they run, they're, they're, they say 2.5 million hours mean time between failure. That's 285 years. Uh, don't, go ahead, price of gold. But, uh, so red is what I use. I read NAS, I use red NAS drives in all my network tech storage devices. You can pay a little more, but they're really, really fantastic. Link can be up in the show notes if you want to refer reference that. How many of you heard about the email app Superhuman? Well, Superhuman for education is ten dollars per month instead of thirty for regular folks. This ought to be some amazing email. You'd be charging thirty dollars a month. They say you get through your inbox faster. I haven't seen my inbox. Spotify and Churnin Entertainment enter first look deal to turn podcasts into TV shows and movies. Hmm. Okay, great. So more Spotify podcasts could soon become TV shows or movies. The two companies, by way of Spotify, own Gimlet Media. We're already working together in collaboration with Pineapple Street Media on the forthcoming adaption of podcast series, The Clearing, about the serial killer Edward Wayne Edwards. So uh, Spotify continues to sign exclusive deals. Matter of fact, there's much controversy over the Joe Rogan experience right now and employees of Spotify are threatening to go on strike in New York because of Joe Rogan's content. This is what happens when people get their hands on content that has been up to this point very open and free. And now poor Joe Rogan is going to be potentially controlled and manipulated. We'll see. The latest Eero Mesh Wi-Fi routers support Wi-Fi 6. So uh, this is another thing. Amazon has debuted. $129 Eero 6. The 229 Eero Pro 6 Mesh Wi-Fi routers. So I'm due for a new router for the law. The one I got on there is a number of years old. It keeps failing. I have to reset it about every three days. It's driving me crazy. 
So I don't have a lot of speed, but I'm counting on Elon Musk to save me here in the next couple months. Has anyone used these Eero routers at all? Um, it's a big wide open space. It's not like to have walls. I'm not, I don't have to have something that's got like massive reach. So is this the way to go? Is, you know, I don't need a mesh because one's router is going to be fine. And, uh, but I'm looking for something. What, what do you think I should do here? Uh, drop me an email, geeknews at gmail.com. You got a router that you love right now that you're using. So, Mike, uh, listen to the, of course, the, the new media show last episode hasn't been published, but when I get it up tonight, listen to the new media show and you'll hear the whole, well, the, the stuff about the strike is new, but you'll hear the whole discussion about uh, Rogan with Rob and I. Ousted Cambridge Analytical CEO cannot run another company for seven years. Apparently, this guy's a really bad dude. So he cannot, from October 5th forward, he cannot run a, quali a qualified corporation for seven years. So, uh, boy, I didn't know that uh, governments could do that, but I guess they can in the UK. Twitter's going to be, uh, well, Twitter blah, blah, plans to bring prompts to read before you retweet to all users. Twitter's experiment to get people to actually read the content they're sharing is going so well, the company plans to extend it to the platform at large very soon. In June, Twitter announced a test feature on Android to promote informed discussion on the platform, something social media static conversational bursts are rarely conducive to. So they want you to read the story that you're linking to before you link to it. Twitter said the prompt worked and users opened articles before sharing them 40% more. Okay. In other words, people, they're trying to train people not to be stupid. That's what they're trying to do. Facebook, well, you know, Facebook, you gotta, it's, it's this love-hate relationship, right? Absolutely love-hate relationship. So Jerry said to use a Unify USG firewall and Unify AC Pro. Jerry, if someone wants to break into my network at the loft, good luck. It, 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 they might as well be on dial-up, dude. Um, <laughs> and Mike says, Dream Machine is a wireless router, by the way. Super fast, super simple, inexpensive, expendable, reasonable price. So uh, a couple of suggestions there. I'll check both those out, fellas. But anyway, Facebook takes down more fake accounts linked to Russian intelligence. Apparently, some of these have been online since 2016. Why are they, why are they still online? Facebook has uncovered yet another network of fake accounts with ties to Russian intelligence services. With another recent investigation, Facebook says the fake accounts post as editors and other media entities in order to trick actual journalists into writing articles for them. The social network disclosed a takedown, saying the fake accounts had gained around 59,000 followers. While we've not seen the networks removed today engage in these efforts or directly target the U.S. 2020 election, they are linked to actors associated with election interference in the United States in the past, long, including those involved in the D.C. leaks in 2016. All right. So, again. More Russian interference. This one has got me a little bit irritated. And I, I, I'm a fan of Hootsuite. My team uses Hootsuite. But Hootsuite says it will terminate its ICE contract without delay. It's interesting how now companies are, for a better word, playing politics and who they do business with. After disagreements within the company spilled over into a public controversy, Hootsuite said it won't go forward with a contract with U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. 
So after disagreements within the company spilled over, tech employees become more outspoken about ethical concerns about how product and service they create are used in recent years. So this goes back to some of the stuff that's going on at Spotify. They say, we don't like some of Joe Rogan's content. We want it edited. We want it censored. So you have a company now that is basically walking away from a government contract. It's very weird times we live in, ladies and gentlemen. It really, really is. Very weird times that we live in. TikTok has asked a judge to block President Trump's ban on the app. TikTok says the ban means hundreds of Americans will be shut out from downloading the app. And what basically what it is, the president extended the download ban for a month. And the ban is due to effect take this Sunday. Basically, they're trying to get the deal through. So another lawsuit been filed here. And the download ban was stayed one week as they were trying to get the deal through with Oracle. So we'll see what, uh, what progresses here. Yet TikTok remains in the news. So I have gotten so annoyed. Everywhere I go, I'm being told to vote. Every damn app, everything tells me to vote. And every time I tell it, I'm voting, I'm registered to vote. Leave me alone. Ignore me. It keeps popping up things telling me to vote. Now, YouTube is putting mail-in voting information next to videos on the topic. Mail-in. <laughs> ah, absentee ballots are fine. I have no issue with those. But it's going to be chaos. It is going to. Here's my advice to you. On November 3rd, go vote. I think that's the date for the election. Maybe I'm giving misinformation. I don't know. Whatever date the election is, go vote. And then turn your TV and your phones off for about two weeks. <laughs> turn your phones off for about two weeks. And then after two weeks, come up for air. I, I, I shudder. You, you know, do any of you actually think that they're going to have the result on election night? There's no way. Unless it's an absolute unequivocal blowout by either candidate, there's no way they're going to have the result. Because some states have already said we're going to give people like nine extra days. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. I, I've gotten uh, more ballots in the mail. Yep, I've gotten more, more ballots. People I don't even know who they are for. <laughs> Here at my office, you know, who these people are, I have no clue. I've Googled the names and, you know, it doesn't give me nothing. <laughs> yeah, there's no problems out there. None at all. I'm going to ask this audience. If you were, if I asked you a poll in an app, would you respond? If, if, if you're, if the app you're listening to this show had a poll, would you respond? Or would you rather come back to Geek News Central and do the poll on the, on the, in the show notes page? Because Spotify is testing an interactive podcast polls in its app. And, you know, it just is an attempt to get, try to draw more of you over there. I, I, I I know very, very, very few people that listen to this show li listen on Spotify. So, but I guess some shows have good, good, uh, good response. But I just don't know if start listening to a podcast if I'm actually going to look at it unless I tell you to look at it to look for the poll. There's no poll, by the way. Facebook's oversight board will begin hearing cases before the U.S. election. The 20-member group will rule on cases starting in mid to late October. 
This is a group that's been set up to rule on moderation disputes across the company's platforms. We'll begin to hear cases as early as mid-October, just ahead of the November U.S. elections. The board, the board, listen to this. Listen to this. The board will be made up of journalists. What can go wrong there? Lawyers. What could go wrong there? And activists across the political spectrum. And will rule on appeals from Facebook and Instagram users, as well as questions from within the company. They'll be aided by a new software tool that allows members to securely access and review cases, information from anywhere in the world, world, and will be trained on the company's community standards and policy process. Okay. The board includes Alan Russ-Ridger, former chief and editor of The Guardian, former Europe Court of Human Rights judge, Andrea Sajo, Heli Thoring-Schmidt, the former prime minister of Denmark, and John Samples, the vice president of the Libertarian Cato Institute. Facebook has set aside $130 million to the board, but said that its decisions won't necessarily set any precedent and only can address certain kinds of content. On top of that, Facebook has made it clear that it's still in control of what happens on the site. Don't get it. This is very, very weird. Yep. This is going to go well. Nicola stock plunges 26% after fraud claims complicate hydrogen plans. Serge hydrogen truck stop. Nicola plunged 26%. The Wall Street Journal pledged that the company was struggling to find partners to build a planned network of hydrogen fueling stations. They're down from $50 to $21.15. This was shortly after GM deal was announced when the uh, when the uh, when the Hindenburg Research Group revealed that the founder wasn't telling the truth at a 2016 event where he claimed that the Nikola One truck on stage fully functions. And Nikola now concedes the truck never worked, and a promotional video of the truck was made by rolling it down a hill. So anyway. Just like at CES. Hey, look at this brand new product. You touch, oh, don't touch the buttons. It's plastic. The old, the old mock up. Microsoft is releasing a non subscription Office suite in 2021. It'll be available on Windows and Mac in the second half of 2021. Huh. That's interesting. How are they going to. What is this? Huh. Well, we'll see what this actually includes and why they're doing this. There has to be, if, when something is free, you are the product, ladies and gentlemen. NVIDIA has apologized once again for the RTX 3090 pre-orders before they even begin. Because a $1,500 GPU built for Extreme Gamer goes on sale this morning and it's going to be chaos. So uh, this is not, the first time we've had some issues here with some, some, uh, some, some gaming cards being released. And uh, Facebook, believe it or not, listen to this. Facebook adds more guidelines for internal employee speech, banning political images in profile pics. So if you work for Facebook, you can't show that uh, Biden-Harris or Trump poster in your background. Huh. If you work for the company, don't show your politics. And they've got a whole bunch of other stuff going on. Wow. That probably will go to a lawsuit. And finally, tonight, a company called SignalFlare has created a really interesting article. It's about the creator economy, of which I belong to. They don't talk about podcasts, which is interesting. But uh, they pr primarily talk about YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, Facebook Live, and some of that. So uh, we don't make money off Facebook Live. There's no way for you guys to donate to the show from Facebook Live. There is on YouTube Live, but I'm not of the category yet to be able to, to, to get donations during a live event. Just don't get enough usage, I guess. 
but this is a pretty good report about what's going on in the creator community and how many creators there are and type of money they make and so forth. So good, good write up, definitely worth checking out. Okay. So I'll be back with you Monday for another show and uh, appreciate you being here today and uh, get this one knocked out in the can just about, uh, just about an hour on the show tonight. I do want to thank everyone. Well, actually a little less than an hour because I've think about 52 minutes. So uh, thank you for being here. Thanks for being subscribed. Thanks for being part of the family. Geeknews at gmail.com is the email address. Geeknews at gmail.com. If you want to become an insider, geeknewscentral.com forward slash insider. We do appreciate all of you that continue to contribute to 5, 10, 15, 20, and $25 a month. It is very appreciated, very much so. And, uh, but I thank all of you for your longtime support. And those of you who support the sponsor and of those of you that send in the one-time donations, we're even getting some from the new media show now. Five bucks here, 20 bucks there. Kind of cool. So uh, definitely appreciate it. Every penny counts and uh, goes all right back into what we pay the contractors that uh, write the content on Geek News Central. It doesn't anywhere come near covering all the bill, but uh, I do appreciate every, every dime that you put in. And again, at $2 a month, it's only 6.7 cents a day to support the one of the longest running continuous tech shows in the podcasting space. So I hope that you will, will consider that. All right, everyone. Thanks. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time here on the Geek News Central podcast. Y'all take care. Be safe. Take care of one another. Watch over the elderly and the young. See ya. Bye-bye.